so in this lecture we are going to talk about the practical applications of preparative centrifugation so here we can uh, see many of the applications where we can have differential centrifugation and density gradient centrifugation separately or we can go for differential centrifugation and density gradient centrifugation combinedly in one experiment so if you talk about these applications one of them are isolation of uh, microsomal fractions from muscle homogenate separation of uh, membrane vesicles uh, with a differing density we can perform uh, this thing we can also have isolation of highly purified uh, sarcolemma vesicles and subfractionation of liver mitochondrial membrane system so we can uh, take any of the applications here and all these applications may be combinedly doing either differential or density gradient or it may be a separate procedure of either differential or density gradient now uh, one thing is quite uh, highlightable again uh, for homogenization of tissues the mincing or the crushing of tissue is done in biological buffer system that should be having right ph value salt concentration and stabilizing cofactors and chelating agents so these things are supposed to be present and all these are having particular functions if you talk about the optimum condition there should be a proper ratio of wet weight and buffer volume there should be a proper mixture of homogenate that's how we can prepare temperature usually 4 degree centigrade perform because at this temperature uh, most of the proteolytic enzymes are not functional and additionally there should be a presence of protease inhibitor now one thing uh, uh, we can discuss about protease inhibitor they have a protective measure against the endogenous enzymes enzymes that are formed internally and the requirement is in between requirement is in subcellular fractionation protocol because as we rupture the cell there is a chance there should be protease enzymes activated during the procedure now if you talk about the commercially available protease inhibitor they are having a cocktail and they have a broad specificity a specificity for inhibition of uh, cysteine proteases serine proteases aspartic proteases metalloproteases and amino peptidases all these proteases and peptidases which are present there so this inhibitor should be combinedly inhibiting the action of these enzymes now they are used in very low concentration macromolar range and uh, these are added to buffer system uh, just prior to the tissue homogenization because the requirement is started the requirement there is sincere requirement of these when there is a homogenization procedure because as i already told you uh, these appear in the they appear in the system when there is a rupture of the cell now uh, if we talk about the efficacy of isolation so we can isolate uh, the large proteins something like 427 kilo dalton dystrophin or 565 kilo dalton uh, rhinodin receptor or 800 kilo dalton nebulin or one of the largest known proteins titin 2200 kilo dalton so these are the proteins which can be if you uh, isolated in intact form in through these protocols now we have to move for the part of subcellular fractionation uh, before that uh, the performance which is been highlighted here is for skeletal muscle fibers there are many examples which i have discussed but here the particularly the performance is discussed about the skeletal muscle fibers and these are highly spy specialized structures involved in the contraction the general role of muscles we all know and now the membrane uh, system is there which maintains the regulation of excitation and contraction coupling energy metabolism and stabilization of the cell periphery so these things are performed these functions are performed by the membrane system now here we can see the structure so it's highlightable right sarcolemma is here there is one function called non junctional transverse tubules 
uh, there is one portion prior junction uh, cytosol all these are extracellular matrix which you are talking about this is a sarcoplasmic reticulum these are the longitudinal tubules these are the terminal cisterni and the mitochondria and uh, this other organelles are present here and this is the skeletal muscle uh, fiber which we can discuss here so a uh, few highlightable structure they consist of sarcolemma and it's uh, in vaginations the transverse tubular membrane system so overall if we talk about the sarcolemma this thing is in continuation and remaining part is coming under this category of what we can say transverse tubular membrane system this transfer tubular membrane system is subdivided into non junctional regions and triad part that form the contact zone with terminal cisterni of the sarcopulmonary reticulum so non junctional region we talk about and this is the triad part this is the remaining part we can consider about so this is uh, one system which is quite present there and other these are the smaller systems which are intact with this now if we talk about the protocol of subcellular fractionation here is the uh, flow chart of this so we have to understand this figure there is a muscle tissue muscle tissue is actually homogenized we have discussed about the conditions of homogenization the buffer the inhibitors all these things and then it is actually centrifuged at 10 minutes centrifuge for 10 minutes at 1000 g and now this tissue homogenate is actually divided in two parts one is called as nuclei and another is called as supernatant now this nuclei settles in pellet and the supernatant we take in a further tube and again we perform the same differential centrifugation 10 minutes at 10000 g and in this process the contractile uh, contractile apparatus is separated and now next is part is the supernatant we move the centrifugation further with supernatant now then next part is uh, centrifugation of supernatant at 20 minutes uh, for 20 minutes at 20000 g now here we can see the mitochondrial fraction is being separated and again we take the supernatant and the final performance of this differential centrifugation is for 60 minute at 100000 g and in this case we expect that the remaining part are being separated at from cytosol and we perform this pellet now we take the pellet and we perform the experiment for further gradient centrifugation and then it is the crude microsomes which we have and then we take 10 to 60% sucrose density gradient the sucrose density gradient is we can simply say from 1.1 to 1.6 density and then we perform if you just calculate the concentration 10% is 1.1 gram per centimeter square uh, centimeter cube and 60% is 1.6 gram per centimeter cube and we perform at 360 minute and 150000 g now we have separate surface membranes with a least density triad then light sarcoplasmic reticulum fractions and heavy sarcoplasmic reticulum fraction if any debris is remained here usually it is been settled at the bottom and this is called as gradient centrifugation now we can understand this thing subcellular fractionation uh, rotor and centrifuge chosen depending on the amount of starting material and this amount can range between 1 and 500 g so usually we don't take less amount than 1 g because it will be causing very less fraction and uh, not more than 500 g now uh, this fractionation is actually repeated centrifugation at progressively higher speed and larger centrifugation period this is the basic protocol of differential centrifugation which we perform now first step is 10 minute for 10000 1000 g we have seen this and it actually pellets the nuclei and cellular debris so we can understand after the homogenization this is the homogenization part for the first step is 10 minute at 1000 g and in tissue homogenate the nuclei and cell debris is separated usually uh, both the fractions come all together all because of the large nature and then we uh, separate the supernatant here 
and next step is performed at 10 minute for 10,000 G and it pellets out the contractile apparatus. So we can see in the next step at 10 minute at 10,000 G the contractile apparatus which is the next heavier part is being pelleted out. Then it is the supernatant which we process and we take it at 20 minute at 20,000 G. And now the pelleted fraction is enriched in mitochondria. This fraction which is mitochondria is very prominent part of the muscle tissues. It is pelleted within the next part. And then, then we, we take the supernatant and finally the 1 hour for 100,000 G. Then it pelleted out the microsomal and cytosolic fractions. So cytosolic fraction obviously it is in liquid part, it is in the supernatant part and the pellet is have been separated with the microsomal fractions. Now next part which we take that we take this supernatant here separately because right now supernatant is clear with mostly cell organelles but this microsomal fraction is right now being performed for a differentiation density gradient. Now sucrate density gradient is used and it is for the further separation of microsomal subfractions. We can see here. So again we have seen this 10 to 60 percent sucrose density gradient is performed. 360 minutes, so quite prolonged time for 150,000 G. And uh, we can use a vertical or swinging bucket rotor. Uh, we will discuss uh, this type of rotor. Broadly, we can understand swinging bucket rotor is something where the swinging bucket, uh, the uh, tube is actually almost uh, uh, becomes horizontal during the performance. So both rotor can be taken, and it should be a sufficiently high G four that we have discussed here, something like 100. 50,000 G. Now, uh, the sucrose gradient centrifugation actually facilitated the separation of crude surface membrane fractions, triad junctions, longitudinal tubules, and terminal cisterny, cisterny membrane vesicle. So, broader these things are being separated through this. You can see the lightest fraction is surface membranes, then the triad junctions, the light sarcoplasmic reticulum fraction, and heavy sarcoplasmic. Is the chance if the homogenization is being somehow not very perfect because th there is always a chance there may be some debris which may be remaining here. Now next important part is how to obtain the fractions especially in the uh, case of what we can say uh, density gradient. So there should be a careful removal of fractions from the top that can be achieved and it can be done manually by the puppet. Second is if uh, we talk about the relatively unstable gradient or tight banding pattern where the bands are quite close. So uh, we can actually harvest the vesicle by the from bottom by automated fraction collector. So there should be some fraction collector uh, which can be taking all this thing one by one by the automated system. So. Uh, what we been done actually centrifuge tube is actually pierced from bottom and fractions are collected by the uh, what we can say gravitational force or uh, what we can do we can uh, other uh, higher density liquid we can put inside the higher density liquid will be going with the bottom and we can uh, replace it will replace the lower density on one by one the fractions will be coming out it can also be performed and uh, finally we can do if there is any close pattern we can just uh, freeze the tube we can just put it and a proper temperature something like minus 4 or minus 20 and then we slice the tubes out usually it is uh, destroying the centrifuge tubes but this can be routinely used in the research laboratories this is the we can perform